Hello, this is the Digital Loop Season 4, Episode 3. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Great to see you. Hi, everybody. So, the big news this week, everybody's been talking about it, OpenAI. Can you tell me what OpenAI is, according to you, Ivan? OpenAI is an initiative uh, created by Elon Musk together with some Altman, Peter Thiel, and some other uh, tech uh, leaders um, to develop a um, non-profit research company focused on, on uh, AI. And basically, what they are, they, they, Elon Musk, for, for many, many, many different occasions, he has mentioned that he's concerned with, uh, about how AI might threaten humanity. So he realized yeah, that anyways, he, anyways, we're going in that direction, so let's dictate the terms and let's work on it so we know, you know what is the best way to go once we're getting, if we're going forward anyways. Yeah, he, I think it was back in 2014, he, he did an interv interview uh, at MIT and he said that AI, artificial intelligence, was our greatest exi existential threat. Uh, so he's really concerned. There's been many articles. He also signed, a, 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 I think, an open paper with uh, Bill Gates uh, and a few others. I think it was Stephen Hawkins, the, the astrophysicists, about the danger of AI. I, I was also uh, lucky to, to witness, I think it was two years ago, and I'll put the link in the show notes, uh, um, a talk, a TEDx talk by a guy who was at uh, Oxford. I think the, uh, it's called the Future of Humanity Institute at uh, the University of Oxford said the same thing. I'll put it's a very nice uh, TED talk to, to listen to. And so we know that a lot of other companies have done now, you know, uh, they're trying to get into AI. There's been, of course, the big ones that we all know, uh, we, from Microsoft to Google to Facebook to Apple. They all, to, cert to some extent, work into AI. I'm just, before we get into a little bit of a debate about this, I'm just going to maybe just define a little bit AI uh, because it's, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of noise about what artificial intelligence is. The first thing we think is like, oh, there's a Terminator will come knock at your door and ask for Sarah Connor, right? Because it's a kind of the thing that we have. We kind of mix everything together. There's actually three, uh, and, and these comes thanks to uh, uh, I was invited to a dinner by Azim. He does this very great newsletter called the Exponential exponential newsletter, I don't remember the exact term, but I'll put the link as well in the show notes. It talks a lot about the future and about, especially about artificial intelligence. And he did a, a dinner uh, a few uh, weeks ago in London and he invited Professor Margaret Bowden. She's a specialist in uh, artificial intelligence. We have that debate about what is exactly AI and is it a threat or not? So there's, let's just, and then I'll move on, but there's three things. There's one is the artificial narrow intelligence. It's basically when you think about it's an intelligence that can do one task very well. Uh, so this is a bit like Watson with the, you know, you, you remember when, when um, what was the name of that tool that beats Casper off at chess? You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, so basically meaning what, that. Watson, no? I think it was oh. Watson, but it was, the first one was called, it was Blue something. Blue uh, something, yes. Yes, yes. And, uh, but that means that there's a term artificial intelligence that only is very good at one task. Then the uh, artificial general intelligence is that it's a, very, it's a kind of a human level, uh, level AI, which according to some we are near, which according to Margaret Bowden we're not uh, near. And then you have the artificial super intelligence, which is basically saying that one day you'll have this super intelligence that's going to you know, be so smart that it's going to be smarter than all humans combined, and this is the actual danger. So it's just to, to say that we're here going to use the term AI, but there's a lot of debate about what exactly is AI and which level the debate relates. It's true that there's a lot of concerns. There's also a lot of hope because a lot of stuff can be done. Be uh, it would be very helpful to have artificial intelligence aiding us in our in our decisions. So this it's interesting that they do open AI because it's I think it's what's a one billion uh, grant, right, Ivan? Yeah, one billion dollars for research. It, it's it's interesting because not only it's answering that potential threat that we're talking about but it's also because they probably realize that they might we might not want a single company owning ai i mean the single company having so much power and so much finance dedicated to this field that it will you know be owned by a commercial entity and that having something like open ai it's all in the title of of the the initiative could be something that could help all humanity that's at least what they what they're what they're proponing. So, what's your take on it? Do you think 
Do you think we have Terminator coming at our door next, or do you think this uh, initiative <laughs> will prevent it? No, I, I'm, I think that, I mean, when we're talking about AI, there is a lot of really interesting things that we need to take into consideration, how it has been evolving for the last uh, few years, how, uh, you know, AI as a concept was kind of like a, a magic box a couple of years ago. And today what we see is that they are starting to go in the direction of actually developing uh, immediate value. You know, there is, there is something, an action that adds value right away. Uh, also, what we're seeing is, uh, uh, what's happening is also the fact that uh, this technology is becoming more and more affordable uh, thanks to you know different factors like cloud computing. Um, the infrastructure is, is more powerful but also more affordable and as a result there's the access to a lot of um, inexpensive software development tools that in the past they were crazy expensive and today they are relatively affordable, relatively cheap. So what's happening is, is also this, the, the fact that uh, 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 this technology is no longer also, let's call it virtual, but it's also is having an impact in the in the physical world. I mean, if we look at uh, uh, self-driving cars, if we look in a, at uh, a, a, a auto autopilot drones, uh, you can see that these technologies is starting to have an impact in the real world. And when you look at all this, yes, you can have, as you mentioned, hope that we are going in a direction that actually has a lot of potential for a lot of really, really valuable, um, um, you know, experiences, tools, products, services. Um, and the danger it comes when, when we start thinking about, as, as, as Elon Musk mentioned, that someday somebody might come up with idea that, you know, it was not Elon Musk, it was some old man mentioned that. Somebody might come up with the idea of programming, you know, the, 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 the system to, you know, you know, the, the, a function that might not take us in a different direction. So, uh, I don't know. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I'm, ex I'm, oh, I'm also excited. There's uh, actually Elon Musk itself. So he's very well known for all these initiatives from SpaceX to Tesla. And in Tesla, he has introduced some type of AI uh, to its the cars for the self-driving. You've seen videos in the past few months. Uh, where our, uh, cars are not totally self-driving, but the assisted driving, where they start, you know, recognizing the lanes and et cetera. So this is a form of narrow AI. So it's not, I, I'm saying that because I don't want either people to think that these people are against artificial intelligence. On the contrary, they see a lot of upside. You know, there's also personalized medicine where it could be helpful. You mentioned drones, uh, um, you mentioned cars. It could be, it could, there's so many other areas where they could be, uh, where you know all the, the analysis of data will help decision making will help uh, you know make up better outcomes for humanity and I think this is really the goal here of of that project and it's I think it's a very good signal to have all these very smart individuals smart, uh, Sam Altman is from Y Combinator the very famous accelerators in the U.S. Uh, that is really uh, uh, and Reid Hoffman of course from uh, the LinkedIn co-founder it's interesting to have. See such powerful in in, in air quotes uh, people signaling that you know we're not against AI, but we should have something that's beneficial for humanity, and that they're putting the the, the money behind it. So there, there there was an article that is related to this. Uh, we both read it, uh, which which said that 2015 was a year a breakthrough year in artificial intelligence. Again, it does it it doesn't really tell which part of artificial intelligence it's it's mentioning. This is a, always the blurry part of the debate, but it shows it was uh, from Bloomberg, and it shows that there's a lot of 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 stuff that is coming up already. This year, so it's not not science fiction. We have seen and we are seeing developments in leaps and developments going very fast. You just mentioned that, Ivan, because of the cheapening of the inflation, the fact that technology becomes cheaper, the processing power becomes more affordable, thus you can add more processing power that you have better tools that are, that, that are, that are created. You also have Palantir, which is that company uh, we never, we rarely talk about it, but it's also one of these unicorns, decacorns, which is uh, also, it's a basically a, a, a tool that allows to, to take a lot of unstructured data and make sense out of it. I mean, they have contracts now with a lot of even defense contractors or even like the U.S. government to actually make sense of a lot of, the, of the, the data that, you know, you collect and then how do you analyze it? This is where artificial intelligence comes into play. So 
it's it, it shows that it's very near. Have you, have you read that article from, from Bloomberg, Ivan? Yeah, yeah, I found it fascinating. And actually, one of the things that I found in that article that I thought was, was really interesting, as you mentioned before, uh, we have the tendency to think that this is kind of like science fiction. But then in that article, it was stated, you know, the amount of projects that, for example, I mean, of course, companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, they have uh, started their own AI lab research uh, facilities. But Google, I found really interesting that uh, over 2,700 software projects at Google in 2015 alone use uh, a key AI technology called deep learning. So. I mean, this is something now, it's happening now. It's not science fiction, it's not someday, but already today, they are really, really active, doing a lot of interesting projects connected with this technology. Now, 2,700 projects, is that a lot? Is that little? I don't know. I don't know the scale of projects that they have. Probably, probably is, 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 is you know, they, they do thousands and thousands of projects. but. 2,700 projects sounds like a lot to me. I mean, the fact that they are already going deeper and deeper in not only understanding this technology, but you know, using it and putting it into play into what Google does, that shows you that this is the direction we're going. And this shows you also that executives, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, managers, CEOs, everybody needs to pay attention to this because this is no longer a, a, a someday in the near future, but this is something that we need to understand today. We need to understand what is its potential. We need to understand how fast this is moving because it's no longer a matter of someday, but it's a matter of here and now. Yeah, uh, so uh, we mentioned a few times Watson, which is the tool everybody talks about from IBM. Uh, Watson is already being used in many uh, fields and tested in many fields. Uh, I put some links in the show notes. You should visit it. And, and I've seen in the last few months a lot of stuff pop up. I've seen, for, for instance, uh, artificial intelligence driven lawyer. So it's a tool that allows you to make better decisions. It allows you to, you know, it, it comes into this discussion of what jobs are safe because if everything that is process based or everything that is a logical, decision-making process can be replaced by a computer, thus by artificial intelligence, then you, uh, the question is open about what kind of jobs are safe. It, it, back to the article, you, you mentioned it in the projects from Google. Google, of course, is very interested in artificial intelligence for many things. They do self-driving cars, but even simply for the search tools, they one of the big things that it's been always hard for, um, for computers compared to human is vision. We we see an object and we immediately know what it is. And when you go on an image search on, on Google, sometimes the results are not as good. You really want to look for something. But by actually having uh, artificial intelligence tools being implemented at in Google search, Google search becomes much more relevant. It makes much more sense of the, of the data that it has in a quicker fast in a quicker fashion as well. So it actually allows the results to show up even quicker. So, so for them, it's not only that it's something that is nice to have it also actually very it's a foundation of what they do they need to get better at decision making and you see that they already starting pushing uh, now it's very simple but we're seeing uh if you use google now whether on android whether the uh, the app or the google app on 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 ios you see that it's a kind of an assistant that helps you uh take decisions about your day it tells you that oh you know the traffic will be Thus, if you have a meeting in an hour, you should leave now because of traffic. Or the, the, the inform you about your trips when you take when you take the plane and everything. These seems little things, but all this is basically a gathering of all data, putting it together and make it uh, make it it you know in a way that makes sense to you as a human to make a better decision. So it's not only science fiction; it's stuff that starts very small, but that will get more and more evolved as, as time goes. And uh, this, I love in the, I don't know if you've seen, but in the same article, they also show that they've used, uh, they've tested uh, the various AI initiatives they have at Google with games to see, okay, how fast can the computer play a game, the old type games that we used to play as kids, how, how good are they becoming, and they become extremely good at playing those games. Uh, by the way, you sent me as well a video uh, linked to Mario, right? Yeah, Mario, this is a fantastic. I had the opportunity to attend a, a lecture uh, by um, um, Singularity University uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was connected about artificial intelligence and the, the disruptive innovation that is happening today. And uh, in, in that presentation, they show this uh, video of, of a, a developer that, you know, 
he, he created a system that self learned how to play Mario Bros. And he record a four minute, five minute video where it shows the evolution of how, you know, the system went from, you know, learning step by step every single move and what are the things that you have to do through during the during the game to the point that is self evolving and you can see it on the video it's a really short it's a 4 minute video really really cool where you see how every time the the, the system is evolving and evolving and evolving to a point that it, it plays the game perfectly and it just it, it took i guess 37 iterations of the evolution of the of the of the understanding of the of the movements and all the things that you need to do to to to, to accomplish the, the goal of the game but it's really fascinating to see how, you know, yes, we're talking about a video game and we're talking about Mario Bros. But the, the implications of this, the fact that computers are learning and are evolving and are understanding the difference between meaning and intent, for example, that uh, I had also the opportunity, I, I was a speaker at uh, a digital university event here in Warsaw last week. And uh, uh, in one of the one of the speakers, there was uh, um, a, an executive from IBM and he show, um, he had the opportunity, he, we, we gave kind of like a, dem a demo show of IBM Watson Analytics. And it was really interesting to see how, you know, the, 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 the computer, the, the system understands what's the intent that you're putting. It's not just the word, but actually the, 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 the understand a little bit the context. And it's really interesting to see how the information that you get allows you to have a better understanding and, 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 and make better decisions. So, so yes, yeah, fascinating times. Yeah, the, the, and there's really, because you, you mentioned that example, there's really now tools that are help decision-making in almost any field from HR to, you know, air travel to uh, supply chain management to audio to investment to uh, I mentioned legal before to agriculture to you know, meaning there's really a lot. I mean, and I encourage you for those who are interested. There's this article called "The Current State of Machine Mach Machine Intelligence" that you know it it, it shows you this. That it starts with the graphics. If I remember, I don't have it in front of my eyes. But it, it starts with this. Uh, infographic with it separates all the names of their startups that are active uh like startups and companies that are active in each field some of them are mentioned here that it's it's actually very interesting to see that it's something that is going on today it's not science fiction that we see as users we see only the tip of the iceberg we have siri on our iphone or cortana if you have windows phone or the Google, I don't remember the name, Hello Google or whatever on, on Google now. So all these tools are only the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of tools that are gathering data, making sense of the data, understanding the end intent of the user and or companies and or decisions and making sense of it and helping you make better decisions. I say better decisions and that's probably where we'll, where we'll finish because coming back to open AI, at what point becomes it a better decision? What is better? And I think this is a bit what, as well, Elon Musk is 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 also uh, do, say, saying while opening open AI is that it might not be a good idea to have a commercial entity having too much power here in terms of artificial intelligence because if we start relying too much on, and I say too much because maybe I'm an old fart talking here, but if you start relying too much on these type of tools to help, and the, we don't, we'll have we lose grip of what is the actual uh, decision-making process? The computer tells us to do something, so, so we do it. But if the computer is maybe biased because it's owned by a commercial entity, it might be good to have another initiative. That's why I welcome OpenAI. Welcome, thank you very much, Elon Musk. We like you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'll see you on one of your cars, by the way. On that, Ivan, uh, I'll see you next episode. We're closing into Christmas, so we're not sure exactly when we're gonna record. But for those who are listening, happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays, everybody. Remember, if you want to give us any feedback, if you want to give us any comments, we are both of us, Paul and I, on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on, on Facebook. And uh, we love feedback. So any 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 time that you have the opportunity to give us some comments, uh, we always appreciate it. Yeah. And with that, we wish you happy holidays and uh, all the best for, for the holidays. Have a good time and enjoy. See you. Bye-bye.